Good morning, student. I'm Dr. Bhupendra Saha, Assistant Professor of Department of Internal Medicine, BP Koirala Institute of Health Sciences. Today, we'll discuss about the electrocardiogram. As you people know, we have already discussed the basics of electrocardiogram in our previous presentation. Uh, so, we'll discuss the ECG in the different uh, pathological state in the heart. And the flow of the talk of this uh, today's presentation will be we'll discuss about the ECG changes in different chamber enlargement in the heart block. What are the ST changes and how we are supposed to comment upon the different ST changes. We will also discuss about the ECG changes in the uh, different ventricular arrhythmias. The first thing like that I want to discuss with you people is what happens in the ECG in a patient with right atrial and the left atrial enlargement. So in the lead to uh, we have already discussed. So the first wave is the P wave here, P wave. The amplitude of the P wave is usually less than 2.5 mm or 0.25 millivolt. But in a patient with right atrial enlargement, when there is a right atrial enlargement, then the depolarization time and of the right atrium and the left atrium, they occur concomitantly. That's why the amplitude of the both atrium get added. That's why it get increased. So if you see the tall P wave in the lead two, then we have to suspect the right atrial enlargement. And the limit is 2.5 mm. So when you are looking at the ECG, if you just you see the amplitude of the, the P wave, like in here, you have to just uh, calculate this amplitude. And if it is more than 2.5, then it's the uh, feature of the right atrial enlargement. We have already discussed that in the lead V1, there is a biphasic pattern of the P wave. The first inverted, uh, this first wave, uh, which is inverted is because of the right atrium. And second, which is inverted is because of the left atrial depolarization. So in a patient with the right atrial enlargement, there is the increase in amplitude of this positive wave, and it is usually more than 1.5 mm. Okay, just you look at this uh, positive wave. So in a patient with left atrial enlargement, so what happened? Uh, so the there is the depolarization of the right atrium at first. Uh, the first uh, there is a depolarization of the right atrium first, but uh, as there is an enlargement of the uh, left atrium, so we, we also see the uh, uh, depolarization of the left atrium in the ECG, and it takes more time. That's why there is an increase in duration of the uh, P wave. The, the normal duration of the P wave is because of uh, uh, is usually less than 120 millisecond. But if there is a left atrial enlargement, the right atrial depolarizes first. Then there is a depolarization of the left atrium, but as it is enlarged, it takes more time. So there's in increase in duration of the P wave. And if it is more than 120 milliseconds, then we have to suspect the left atrial enlargement. And we see then some notch pattern and popular known as the M mitral, sorry, P mitral. Okay. And similarly, if you look at the V1 wave, as we have already discussed, this positive wave is uh, this positive wave is because of the right atrium, so there will be no change in the positive wave, but uh, definitely there is an increase in amplitude in the negative deflection because it's because of the left atrium. So uh, if you calculate the amplitude of the left wave, uh, then there is increase by more than one mm. Okay, so uh, in a patient with right atrial enlargement in V1, the, there will be the more positive deflection. Uh, in case of the left atrial enlargement, in V1, there is a more amplitude of the negative def uh, deflected wave. So just you check uh, that thing in ECG. Similarly, you can also uh, look at for the axis. Uh, in case of the right atrial enlargement, there is right axis deviation. In case of left atrial enlargement, there is a left axis deviation of the P wave. You can easily calculate that wave if you, if you can make a graph of, of uh, the axis. So, this is what I have uh, discussed earlier. The similarly, uh, 
when uh, we are looking at the EKG of the uh, right ventricular hypertrophy, when there is a right ventricular hypertrophy, uh, there is a more uh, positive deflection uh, in the electrode which sees the right ventricle. Uh, like uh, we have to look at these changes in the uh, in the especially in the lead two and lead three because uh, it's the it, uh, it is the inferior. Uh, it looks the heart from the inferior uh, side. So your inferior part of the heart is looked by the lead two and lead three. And we also know that the inferior surface of the heart is uh, made by the right ventricles. So there were changes in the uh, inferior leads like lead two and lead three or AVF. AVF. We can easily see. Uh, so there is the uh, T wave uh, inversion and ST depression. Uh, there is it's, uh, suggesting of the some form of the RV strain. But uh, uh, when you are analyzing the different electro electrodes, uh, like especially V1 and V2, uh, these electrodes usually looks the right side of the heart. That's why uh, uh, just check here. So there is a right axis deviation. We can easily calculate the axis here. One and AVF is uh, directing towards each other. So there's a right axis deviation here. And if you calculate the R wave in V1, usually in the V1, uh, there is a positive, uh, there is a predominantly the negative wave like this. There is predominantly negative wave. Okay, the negative wave, but you can easily see there is a, a, a this positive deflection is the R wave. And if the amplitude of, of this R wave is more than six mm, then we have to suspect the right ventricular hypertrophy. Normally, we don't see the R wave in V1, but if the uh, if we see um, the amplitude of R wave more than the S wave, then we have to suspect the uh, RVS. Similarly, S by ratio in is, uh, is in the uh, V1 and S by ratio uh, in the V5 or V6. Okay, it's not in the VN, it's in the V5. There is a more negative deflection in V5 or V6. So, uh, it's a very simple, if you just you check the inferior leads, if you see some ST changes, then you check the uh, V1 and or V2. If you see the predominantly R wave, then always suspect the right ventricular hypertrophy. Uh, most of the time we see uh, this type of ECG in a patient with cord pulmonary. Okay, in the cord pulmonary we see the like uh, positive R wave in V1. Uh, similarly, for the left ventricular enlargement, uh, there are so many criteria uh, for the for the MBBS student. Um, the 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 clue is uh, look the EKG changes in the left sided leads. In the left sided leads, there will be the more positive deflection. In the right sided leads, there is a more negative deflection. Okay, so we, as the right ventricle left ventricle enlargement, so there, the vector of the depolarization is more directed towards the left ventricles. So what we have to do, we have to see the. Uh, Amplitude, you have to calculate the amplitude whether in V5 or V6. The, the amplitude which is more, then we have to take that amplitude. Like in the CCG, the V5 amplitude is more like up to here. Okay, this we have to, this is the amplitude of the uh, R, uh, R wave, okay, R wave in V5. And we have to add this with the amplitude in the V1. So this, um, this is S. So this is S in V1 and this is uh, R in V5. Five. If we uh, add the these two amplitude, then if it is more than thirty-five mm, uh, then we can say that there is a there is a left ventricular enlargement. Okay, there is a left ventricular enlargement. This is this the name of this criteria is Sokolu line criteria. Similarly, what you can do, you can apply another criteria called coronal voltage criteria. In the coronal voltage criteria, as we have already know, AVL is the Electrode, we see the left side of the heart, so definitely there will be the more positive R wave in AVL. In the CCG, AVL is here, AVL, the magnet of AVL, you have to calculate this. And V3 is uh, looking the heart from the right side, uh, uh, basically in the anterior aspect, it looks to show there will be the more negative in the V3. So it's more negative. You have to just add the, this uh, S wave in V3 with the uh, R wave in AVL. If it is more than 28 mm in male, then we have to suspect the uh, LVS, left ventricular hypertrophy, which is more than 20 mm in female, then we have to suspect the uh, left ventricular hypertrophy. So for the MBBS student, now let us revise. For the right atrial enlargement, uh, just check the amplitude of the P wave in lead two, okay? It is more than 2.5 mm. 
for the lay battery enlargement there is increase in duration of the p wave because uh, duration if it is more than 120 milliseconds then you have to suspect the lay battery enlargement for the right ventricular enlargement to see the changes in the right sided electrode slide in case of v1 and v2 in the normal ecg uh, there is more predominantly negative waves in v1 and v2 but if you see predominantly positive waves in v1 and v2 then you have to suspect the right ventricular hypertrophy definitely there will also be st changes in the inferior lids in case of left ventricular enlargement, there will be more positive deflection in the left-sided uh, electrodes like V5 or V6 and more negative, uh, negative waves in the right-sided electrodes like V1. So uh, if you see, if we analyze, if we calculate, then definitely we can make a diagnosis of the different chamber enlargement. Okay. Now we'll go to the ECG in the different heart blocks. So second thing uh, we have to know about the different heart blocks. In the heart blocks, uh, just you have to calculate because we know, uh, so the current uh, from the SA node, uh, SA node, uh, like this type of, this is the SA node, uh, okay. SA node will come to the AV node by different internodal pathway from there, there is then uh, bundle phase, then ultimately from Parkinson's uh, fibers. So in the first degree heart block, uh, so P, uh, we have already discussed uh, the P wave is because of atrial depolarization and uh, from the here, uh, from here to here, like uh, from P wave to the Q wave, uh, starting of Q wave is uh, the time taken by the uh, uh, AV node for the conduction of the uh, depolarization current. So uh, we have to measure the uh, PR interval here from PR meter from P wave to the uh, Q wave. Normally, uh, the PR interval is uh, usually uh, less than uh, 200 millisecond. 200 millisecond that five is smallest box normally. Uh, so if it is more than that, uh, then we have to suspect some conduction delay at the level of the AV node. So if there is an increase in PR interval more than 200 millisecond, that is 20. To a five smallest box, then we have to suspect the first degree heart block. And if uh, if there is a, every P wave is followed by Q wave, but PR interval is more than 200 millisecond, then that's the ECG of the first degree heart block. Okay. Second degree heart block. There are two types of second degree heart block. Mob is one and mob is two heart block. In the mob is one, what happens? Uh, in the this is called the wink phenomena. So we can see there is a, here in the CCG, uh, there is a PR interval here uh, is a prolonged in this in comparison, comparing to this, there is a more PR interval. So there is a uh, like a successive uh, prolongation of the PR interval with each uh, bit, but uh, suddenly there will be the uh, failure to conduct that impulse to the ventricles. So here is no wave. Okay, here is, here is normally here should be the wave, uh, PRS, in, but there is no wave, it is absent. So, PR interval, then prolong, then more prolong. If and there is no wave, then uh, this is Mobile's type one second degree, second degree heart block, and is usually suggest a pathology in the uh, AV node that is supranodal uh, problems, uh, pathway problems. In the Mobile's type two, we can see the like normally conducted P wave here, normally conducted P wave and QRS, but suddenly there is uh, uh, there is uh, no QRS. So if there's a normally conducted P wave and suddenly if, like uh, this conduction system fails to uh, conduct the depolarization current, then this is a Mobius type two. Usually in case of Mobius type two, there is a problem in the working the system and the prognosis of the Mobius type two uh, block is uh, more serious than that of the Mobius uh, one because it shows the pathology in the park in the system or in the ventricles. Um, that's why if you see the uh, Mobius type two block, then it's more serious, okay? So this is second degree heart block. So Mobius type one is uh, uh, like successive prolongation of the uh, PR interval and sudden drop of the uh, QRS uh, complex. Whereas Mobius type is, is uh, there is normal conduction, but suddenly there is loss of the uh, QRS and then we have to suspect the Mobius type two. Similarly, third degree heart block, in the third degree heart block in the CCG, uh, you can easily see in the ECG, the, probably if this is a P wave, uh, we can see, then we have to calculate this, this is provided this is, this is another P wave because we have to charge for the P wave, this is another P wave, this is another P wave, like this. 
So, and this is this is QRF, QRS, and this is QRS. So, and is another different way. Okay, no, it is QRS. So, if if there is independent uh, uh, independent atrial depolarization and the ventricular depolarization, so like atrium is depolarizing or showing PO in different manner. Uh, so uh, there is different in the rate, atrial rate and the ventricular rate, then we have to suspect the third degree heart block. Sometimes in the third degree heart block, uh, we can see the fusion bit uh, and, uh, and the capsule bit sometimes, okay, like uh, this type of bit, like here, you can see there is a, some uh, fused bit here. Okay, so if there is independent atrial and the ventricular depolarization, then they definitely have to think about the third degree heart block. Uh, usually, the rate uh, of the ventricular rate is usually near about 40 or 40 uh, bit per minute. Uh, usually, like in the CCG, what is the ventricular? 1, 2, 3, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, uh, usually 300 uh, divided by 7, near about uh, 50. So, uh, like, and this is the ventricular rate. And for the atrium, like 1 and 2. For atrial rate, uh, here is P wave, here is P wave, then 1, 2, 3, 4. So 300 divided by 4 will be 75. So atrial rate is 75 in the CCG and ventricular rate is 50. So there is difference in atrial rate and the ventricular rate. And that gives us clue to diagnose the third degree heart block. Okay. So let us revise the third degree heart block. So first degree heart block is just there is a prolongation of the PR interval more than 200 millisecond. So, uh, okay, that's the first degree heart block. Second degree heart block is there is a two type that is Mobius type one and Mobius type two. In Mobius type one, there is pro, like successive prolongation of PR interval and sudden drop of the QRS that is Mobius type one. In Mobius type two, there is a, like there is normally conducted P wave, but suddenly there is loss of the QRS complex that is Mobius type two. In the third degree heart block, there is independent atrial and ventricular depolarization. That's why atrial rate differs from the ventricular rate. Sometimes we can also see the capture bit and the fusion bit in a patient with third degree heart block. So these are the easy changes in the third degree heart block. Then we'll also discuss about the ST and the T wave changes. So we have, we have already discussed what is J point. Uh, J point is, uh, so J point is, this is a P wave, this is a Q, R, S, and this is S wave, and this is uh, the T wave, uh, this is T wave. So J point is the uh, end of the S wave and starting of the uh, ST segment. So this point is the J point. Okay, this point is the J point. So when we are uh, looking at the depression or uh, depression, then we, have, we are supposed to calculate the J point, uh, this uh, 0 0.08 seconds that uh, from the J point, uh, we have to calculate that is two smallest blocks away from the J point. Like, uh, suppose if this is a P wave, uh, this is QRS, and this is, let's suppose uh, this is uh, the J point, and like this type of ECC, if you see this type of ECG, and if the J point here, J point here, and isoelectric lines, we have to draw from the TP segment isoelectric lines, and we have to see uh, this depression, this depression, okay, by 0 0.08 seconds away from the J point, okay. And if it is more than one mm, then it is significant ST depression. So find out the J point, just go uh, two smallest blocks away from the J point and you just calculate the amplitude of that depressed part uh, from the isoelectric lines, which is a TP segment. Uh, that is the ST segment. So if there's a flat and down sloping of the ST segment, there is, there is a down sloping of the ST segment is significant and it's usually suggests of ischemia. Okay, this is how we calculate the ST changes. Now, what are the ECG changes in the myocardial infarction? In the myocardial infarction, the classical ECG changes is the there's elevation in the uh, J point. Okay, there is elevation in the, uh, the J point here. So here, uh, the, Okay, this is the J point here, J point here. This is J point here. So the elevation of this is isoelectric lines here. The TP segments, the isolated the elevation in the J point, there is a elevation of the ST segment here. ST segment is also elevated here. So 
So these are the changes in the nicotine and infarction. So it's usually in ST uh, MI. So there is elevation of the G point, there is the elevation of the uh, ST segments. And then later on, uh, we can also see, so there is a formation of the Q wave here, there is a Q wave. Uh, later on, there, so, there is, uh, so there is also the T wave changes here. And the first changes is the with hyperactive T wave here. So what happens if there is a STMI? The first ECG changes that we are going to see is the, that there is an increase in amplitude of the T wave. And then, then after a few hours, then we see the elevation in the J point and the ST segments. Later on, there's a decrease in the ST segment and formation of the Q wave. And ultimately, uh, so the ST segment comes at its normal pos position. And but there is a like this Q wave persists for the long time, long time. So what is the first changes in the ECG in a case of STMI is that we have to see, we have to the T wave. There is a high amplitude T wave. There is elevation of the ST segments. There is an elevation of the J, J point and there is a formation of the Q wave as per the duration. So in the ECG, you can easily see in the V1 leads here, V1 leads here, here in the V2 leads here, V2 leads here, and even in V3 and the V4, V4. So, but, and then we have to know which wall is involved. V1 and V2 looks at the septum and the V3 and V4 looks at the anterior wall and V5 and V6 is in the lateral wall. So in the ECG, there is ST changes in the V1, V2, V3, and V4. There is anteroceptal MI. This is ECG of anteroceptal MI. And definitely to, uh, to uh, add on to our uh, points, so we have to also look for the reciprocal leads. Uh, it will help in uh, confirming the diagnosis of the ST elevated MI. These are, there are some reciprocal leads, like for the inferior leads, like lead 2, lead 3, and AVF. The reciprocal leads are one and AVL. So if there is a ST elevation in like, like in case of inferior leads, like in the, the like this type of ECG in the uh, lead two, okay, there is ST segment elevation. Then definitely there will be the, uh, like there will be the depression in the, uh, the here, depression here is, here is the elevation. So this may be the lead one. So there is a reciprocal changes in the reciprocal leads. So if there is a ST elevation in lead two, lead three, and lead AVF, then we have to start for inferior uh, wall MI because these leads looks at the, looks the heart from inferior side. Definitely, if there is elevation, then in its reciprocal lead like one and AVF, there will be the depression. If that is the mirror image is there, there, then like it is suggestive of the uh, myocardial infarction. Similarly, there are the some. Like for the one and AVL reciprocal lead are will be two lead three and AVF. So when you are analyzing the EKC, EKG of the myocardial infarction, uh, we don't only see the ST elevation, we also see whether there's reciprocal changes or not. Okay. And so what is the significant ST elevation for the MBVS student? It's a 0 0.5 millivolt. That is uh, the one smallest box. Even if there is an increase in one smallest box, like in the P wave and then S wave and uh, like, sorry, sorry. Uh, this is P wave, then Q wave, then R, and like even the, the smallest box. So then we have to, from the T wave and then P wave here, then we have to make the TP segment that is isoelectric lines from here like this. And we have to uh, measure this amplitude. If it is more than one smallest box, then it usually suggests the as significant ST elevation. And that should occur in at least in two contiguous leads. But except in V2 and V3, where the usually there you can see the ST elevation, uh, uh, people have kept the different amplitude uh, for the diagnosis. For the patient, for the male of age less than 40 years, the, they have kept the limit up to 2.5 millivolt. For the male uh, more than 40 years, they have kept the uh, 2 millivolt as upper limit, and for the female, it's 0 0.15 millivolt. So for the MBBS student, just memorize. If there is an elevation of the ST segment more than one mm or 0 0.4, 0 0.1 millivolt uh, from the isoelectric lines, then we have to suspect the ST segment elevation and that should occur in two contiguous lead. So after, like if you do the ECG of the patient with myocardial infarction after a few days or a few weeks, uh, then definitely we see the post ischemic changes in the ECGs. 
Like one is significant post ischemic change in the Q wave. So as I have already discussed, uh, in the ECG, uh, in the ECG, like this is a P wave and this is a Q wave. This type of Q wave will be uh, this. This Q wave is usually we will see in the, in a case of uh, transmural uh, STMI. And for that, we have to see this depth. It is more than uh, 0 0.1, that is one smallest box, then it is significant. And if the duration of Q wave is more than 30 milliseconds, then it's significant. Okay, so that should occur in two contiguous lit. So that's why, uh, if you, to say the way Q waves are pathological Q wave or not, just we have to measure the amplitude. And if it is more than one smallest box, then you have to think of the um, like they, there can, there might, there might have been uh, ischemia in the past. Okay. Then uh, in the ST changes, uh, we have to, we have to also discuss about the T wave morphology in the ECG. In the T wave morphology, uh, so like we have already discussed, normally the up uh, up stroke is slow process in the ECG and down stroke is rapid. This is the typical morphology of the T wave in the normal ECG. But sometimes there can be increase in amplitude and the significant increase in amplitude, if it is more than 10 mm in chest leads, like V1 to V6, or 5 mm in the limb leads, like 1 to 3, and it is significant T wave changes, okay? And for that the reason, maybe hyperkalemia or it may be because of the MI like that. So in case of hyperkalemia, which is one of the first senses that you will see in a patient with hyperkalemia is that, so there is a tall, tented, narrow based T wave here. So there is no slow up stroke. There is fast up stroke and the fast down stroke as if someone is pinching from the ups, up, 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 up sides, there's a narrow basis there. And the amplitude is more than 10 mm in chest lead and 5, 5 mm in limb leads, then we have to suspect the hyperkalemia. Similarly, in case of the MI, sometimes we see the like T wave, but the base of the T wave is broad and it's not like uh, pointed in. Okay, it's not a pointed in uh, ECG in case of ischemia. That's the difference. Okay, so you, you have to also see the T wave morphology. See, this is the pathological Q wave that I have already discussed. The amplitude here is like you have to calculate the amplitude. It is definitely more than uh, one small box. It's near about two small box. So that's why it is significant. And it's more than 30 milliseconds. So that's, the, that's why it is significant. But this changes should occur in at least in two contiguous limbs. Okay. So now we'll discuss something about the different ventricular arrhythmias. It's like... Uh, in this one important finding that we see uh, in a patient, uh, in, in our patient is VPCs, uh, that is uh, ventricular premature complexes. So in this ECG, some like suddenly we see this type of ECG. These are the, uh, EC, these are, these are the waves that are coming from the ventricular depolarization uh, from the abnormal sites. So uh, the, these, uh, wide wave like there is a wide qrs here definitely it is a wide qrs and uh, it is not preceded by the p, p, p wave normally it is not preceded by the p wave and that uh, this is the r wave and this is s wave like they are in the different uh, directions and even the q wave is uh, sorry uh, uh, sometimes this is, q wave is opposite direction of the r wave and definitely we see the compensatory pause here, like in definite, definite compensatory pause here. So if you see the white QRS, like only one thing is coming there, which is not preceded by the P wave. And like there is different morphology of the Q and the R, and there is the compensatory pause, then definitely we have to think of the ventricular premature complexes. So uh, sometimes with its normal rhythm, we see like it's a normal rhythm, but uh, you see the VPC is here, this normal rhythm, this is VPC is here. If, if the uh, VPC is alternating with the normal rhythm, this is called the ventricular bisemine and it's one of the side effect of the desoxin uh, therapy. Okay, this is a ventricular bisemine. In case of ventricular trisemine with two uh, normal rhythm, there is one abnormal rhythm, VPC, this is a ventricular trisemine. Uh, sometimes, uh, like we see the two BPCs coming simultaneously, one BPC and one BPC. This is kind, uh, called the ventricular couplets. Okay, this is called ventricular couplets. So, if it is only one BPC, then oh, it's only BPCs. Uh, it is followed by alternate with the normal sinus rhythm, it's called bisemini. It is followed by uh, two normal sinus rhythm, then it's called the ventricular trisemini. But if there is a two BPCs, 
not followed by the any compensated pouch then it's called ventricular corpus now ventricular tachycardia so if there is a two vpcs then there's a ventricular corpus but if there is a three or more vpcs then we have to think about the ventricular tachycardia like in the here you can see this is also vpcs this is also vpcs this is also vpcs there are more than three so that's why it is the ecg of the ventricular tachycardia so in the ventricular tachycardia there is ab dissociation like there is different rate for the atrium and different different rate for the ventricles and sometimes they is fuse and you can also see the fusion and, and the capture bit in case of ventricular tachycardia so we see uh, this type of ecg this is the monomorphic uh, ventricular tachycardia and sometimes in the ecg like we see there is definitely there is a vt here because we see uh, more than 3 vpcs over here there is definitely but uh, like it's changing in, in its morphology like it's changing in its morphology and uh, its direction it is it is uh, like going up it is going down so there is then so this type of polymorphic if there is change in uh, polymorphic the prolonged circuit this is called the torsion is point is okay and usually initiated by the bradycardia or pause here is bright like there is some pauses here and definitely like that there is ventricular this is uh, there is a bpcs of different morphologies so this is the torsion is point point is the last one i think probably this is the last one and this is the v, v ventricular fibrillation in this is there is definitely we see the qrs complex but of the different morphology here different morphology here different morphology here there is no q wave at all the rate is irregular and is very fast ventricular rate okay there is a zigzag pattern of the qrs complex uh, so it's a ventricular fibrillation it's one of the medical emergency and if you see this type of the ecg then uh, immediately you have to give the this is off okay so these are the different ecg in the ventricular arrhythmias for the mbbs student i think it will suffice ecg is a uh, quite complicated chapter if you have any comment then you can write in the comment section uh, definitely i'll be happy to answer you enjoy learning thank you